Hello everybody. Good evening. I'm Metal Poet and thank you so much for joining me. Last week we finished our Kerbal School episode um, series with episode 9 where we did Apollo style moon landings. And this week we start our brand new series Kerbal University. Which does not quite pick up where that left off. It jumps ahead a few chapters and leaves you something to explore for yourself. In this series, we're dealing with a full trick tree, completely unlocked as you can see, so we can do some of the more advanced things. And if you've played through the cold school stuff, then you should be able to do most of these things once you unlock everything. But if not, have fun, play it through and pick up with this series once you do. It will be on YouTube as with the previous series. And as before, I don't really know how many of these I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start until I run out and keep going till I run out of ideas. So <laughs> then we'll do something else. So for now, let's see if we can learn how to build SSDOs. SSDOs are an interesting beast because they're very, very solid target to go for for a little more of an advanced thing in Kerbal but in real life they don't actually exist nobody's ever successfully built one they're hard to build Rach hello lovely of you to join us <laughs> so yeah and mad girl as I was saying it's really hard to build an SSTO in real life and Stepping back this moment. What is an SSTO? That stands for single stage to orbit Effectively a vehicle that can make it to orbit Without staging any parts off and destroying them Which would be by far the cheapest way ever to do space travel The shuttle program was started out as an attempt to build one But they just could not get enough energy Onto a plane like structure to get to orbit and back which is why it ended up with that giant extra tank and the two um, boosters, which made it a lot less effective and efficient. But it was the closest to an SSTO that anybody's ever actually got. There are pretty much two key pieces of technology that we're hoping might change this. One is the Sabre engine and the other is Aerospike engine. Um, the Sabre engine has an analog in the game called the Rapier, which is by far the best thing to build um, SSDOs out of in-game. There is also aerospikes in it, though they tend to be good for other tasks. Um, so I'm not really going to go into them tonight. Um, in terms of building an SSDO, for the first time you build one, these Mark II parts are by far the right, the, the most ideal ones to do um, for pieces to do it with. Now you're mostly going to want liquid fuel only, but you do need some oxidizer. So these adapters like this are kind of worth it for that. And I highly recommend the shock cone intake because. One of these produces enough intake air to drive four um, rapier engines. If you don't want to go interplanetary, you don't need a nuclear engine or anything. And we're going to go for simple tonight. Or the simpler <laughs> level of SSDO design. But you do typically want to be able to carry at least a bit of cargo or something. Like go put a satellite into orbit or something. So you might want to stick something like a cargo bay on. Cargo bays have quite a bit of drag and SSDOs are all about minimizing weight and drag. But if you don't have one, you can't put any of the stuff that aren't plane parts anywhere. So you need one anyway. If you want real um, cargo as well, you might want to go for the longer one. Okay, so. Now comes the first little trick, and I have to ask, I have to thank Veos for this because I learned the trick from him. Um, when you put your, or when you have your cargo bay on, grab a small probe core and stick it in there. An advantage of a probe core here is you can now go 
switch to angular placement grab the rotate tool just twist it forward two points now what this is going to mean is if you control from here and you point prograde then prograde is going to be relative to this thing which means the plane is going to do that which means you're going to come back which means you can return from orbit at exactly an ideal angle without any difficulty holding position so just put a little um, action group uh, marker here to say control from here and we'll put another one on the main cockpit and say control from here uh, as soon as I locate it there it is so button 9 controls the plane flies flat button 10 control takes the probe call and flies at an angle nice for returning missions we now want to put some engines on this thing so we really want at least two rapiers so let's put a bicoupler like this and that gives us some room inside for a couple of other things which you're generally gonna need like a battery for some electricity and you need some way to generate power you can stick some solar panels in here or maybe a couple of RTGs like so which will work just fine too and then I will personally like to stick a docking port in there so that you can load some light cargo in here and be able to deliver it to orbit so let's have a look see how this looks now okay so we got our center of mass all the way there in the front that's a bit of a problem um, and I'm kind of thinking that I actually want to go for the smaller um, cargo bay on this occasion but you can go for the big one it'll, it'll the main controls aren't going to be different this back on That's not quite where we want to be okay we're going to need to put a new probe core on for our return go so this one can't carry anything but a very small um, <laughs> payload but that's fine small is okay um, uh, the important thing is we can actually carry it so that's what we're aiming for here and it's all it's really there's a degree of room to play around with these things you know you work out what what fits your needs okay, so let's say let's just restore our action group custom 10 control from here Now, however, I feel we need some. Okay, so we got a small issue here. I feel we need a jet fuel tank in the main body. Not that's monopropellant. That's rocket fuel. There we go. Liquid fuel is what we're looking for and put that there which is both the bicoupler and the nose adapter here are um have oxidizer that should be plenty of oxidizer for our needs already probably more than we actually require but it'll do so now we can close this that's already moved our center of mass a little further back which helps um so wings we need wings and there are a couple approaches you can take for a beginner in stage, the big S Delta wings are actually a pretty decent um, fit. But we don't think we want to go for them just yet. Let's put our rapiers on first. There they are. So. Hmm. I do believe we need more fuel though so we can drive four rapiers with this system 
So I'm going to suggest we stick a couple of these on here and make sure you put them directly beside the center of mass. That way, as they drain, your center of mass isn't going to move, so your balance isn't going to change. And we've got enough air here to drive four engines, so let's put two more on. Right. And I feel like we will need more jet fuel too. So here, yeah, the whole weight and drag thing comes into our thinking. We're going to want to go for these Mark 1s. And build a couple of them into a structure. This often actually ends up being less weighty than other options. Let's move that out the way for a moment want to balance this right over the center of mass again so it won't move much right, now we can put this one on and now we have a nice four engine look we will want some nose cones here these nose cones the slightly rounder ones are actually Hello, playing Dutchman. Nice to you of you to join us. Um, engines or wings? Huh? We are doing wings and engines, but not rockets as such. Lovely to see some new people here. Um, glad to, glad you could join us. Right, this tank here. We can just put these on. But now I'm going to teach you a little trick. And this is like one of an exploit of game mechanics, but it works and it's worth it. Which is if you take these tiny little um, nose cones, flip that around, and stick them on the back of the rapier engines, then they massively reduce the drag the rapier engines themselves produce, which makes your whole plane a lot less draggy. So it's a bit of a it's slightly cheaty, but that's how the game is coded, so <laughs> it's not going to hurt anybody, is it? Okay, that should be plenty of fuel and, um, and thrust. So, wings. Now, at this point, we've got quite a bit of jet fuel here. So, the one advantage of the biggest delta wing is you can actually put extra jet fuel inside it. Which is a potential option. But it's also quite heavy, so if you don't really need it, like we probably don't need it here, you're probably better off than um, going for something like this. Grab a couple of... Grab one of these, grab a normal delta wing. It would help if we had these over there. And you almost always want to lift your wings a slight but a wee bit up when you're doing SSDOs. Just a smidge like this. And it just makes SSDOs easier to steer if you do that. Now, there are a number of things you could do beyond these basics, but I think this is enough for initials. Now, we need to worry about um, steering. And we probably should have that on. So far, that's actually almost spot on. Though we're not quite ready to go yet. We need to be able to um, steer in your. So, something like a couple of tail wings is always a good, is often good for that. Uh, that's your only. Now, when you have big wings like this, you can usually handle your steering. Or you you don't usually need um, tail fins or, or rather tail wings because you can get away with just these to handle your pitch. You will be 
roll only and you will be both pitch and roll due to your location. We can just tweak these a little so that they are neatly aligned. Okay, that's moved our center of lift a little further back than I'd like. But that's not too bad, which means we can put a couple of canards here, which puts it almost spot on, and it'll give us some lovely, better um, verticality control. <laughs> um, I've been playing Kerbals since 2013, so almost 10 years now. With these will only be for pitch. With all those together, we should have near perfect pitch control, I'd say. And I must give credit to Veos. I've never been super great at building SSTOs. I've been watching his videos to get better at it and replicating his results to be able to do the tonight's um, lesson. A lot of the others have been focused on stuff I'm already good at. Tonight, I had to learn myself before I could teach. But I like teaching, and that's why I've taken a very teach people approach to this channel. So if we stick a couple of those medium, what are those mediums, yeah, over there, and we can stick one large on the front. I always like to have the nose slightly lifted because it makes taking off easier. Yeah, it came, it's been out since 2011. I know, it's insane, right? In fact, they've officially ended development on KSP1 now. The team from KSP1 is now actually working on KSP2. So this is the final version of KSP1. So unless I'm missing something, we should be ready for our first test flight. In theory, I think this has pretty good odds of working. So let's give it a try. Now, normally, I, I, I often build mine to also have a nuclear engine. That way you can go interplanetary, especially if you have a way to refuel. But consider that the more advanced version. For now, we're not even going to put a payload in yet. We're just going to see if we can fly this plane to orbit. And back. But I just realized there is one critical thing we really should add. And I might be a little... I might be a little too much tilted up with these this wheel layout, but we'll look at that in a minute. But you really, really want parachutes on an SSDO for your landing. You're often going to come in really fast. Now, Veyas doesn't put them on his, but I find they are in, they're indispensable for um, helping you actually get to the ground alive. Especially if you don't make it spot on to the runway. Um, I am. KSP2 does look really ex interesting, but honestly, we don't know a lot about it yet. Some of the stuff like um, colonization and such that they've hinted at look really inter look really cool. And as do you need mods for that in KSP1? They obviously never going to be added again now. Um, but it can also, the mods that are in KSP1 tend to get really complicated and add a whole level of extra difficulty. So it's possible that that might actually raise the difficulty too high. And newbies might be put off, I don't know. The graphics look amazing, I will say that outright, from the trailers and stuff so far. Um, it looks promising, nobody knows how when it will be out, so as of now... There's hints for later this year, but nobody knows for sure. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. And hopefully it lives up to the wonderful tradition KSP-1 established. And if it doesn't, well, we still have KSP-1, right? So those parachutes may not be quite enough to put our safety to the ground by themselves, but they should at least help if necessary. And I would say it's a good idea to also put some air brakes on an SSTO because you are coming from space. When you're coming down to land, you're going to want to be able to slow down to landing speed easily. 
and it's also always a good idea to have some auto strutting on so especially for ssdos because they get subjected to quite a lot of force okay let's go test fly nice to see chat so busy tonight I don't I, 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 I often have a lot of people just listening and watching and not really interacting. So it's nice to see conversation happening. Thanks people. <laughs> now in terms of flying an SSTO, there are all sorts of theories people have, but in my experience the best way to go about it is aim it at an angle of attack of 10 degrees and fly there until it switches until your app perhaps is over 50 kilometers then start following progress that simple it's not the absolute most efficient way to do it but it's reliable and it's simple and it's probably for that reason more likely to work than the absolute most efficient ways so let's go um, the rapiers can fly in both operate in both jet or um, rocket mode now once they get too low on oxygen to operate as jets they will automatically switch mode um, but for perfect efficiency you actually want to manually switch a little earlier which you really want an action group for I didn't set one up because that tiny bit of efficiency gain is not worth the extra complications in my mind just let them switch when they need to when they auto switch it's fine so there we go we're aimed at about 10 degrees we can raise our landing gear and now we pretty much just want to hold it here and assuming that this thing flies steady and the center of mass isn't going to shift too much which we try to ensure we should be able to maintain this angle of attack while we get nice and fast over time until we are fast enough in fact to um, start reaching orbital velocities. Don't go above 10, 10 degrees because the higher you aim, the slower you accelerate. Don't go too much below it, otherwise you're not gaining height. 10 degrees seems to be the sweet spot. But it also looks like we've got a wee bit of imbalance. We're struggling a little to maintain it. Which makes me think our center of mass Balancing isn't as good as I hoped. But it might still be good enough to function. We'll see. This is our first test flight on this plane after all. Might also have been worth it to put a reaction wheel or five in there to help keep it steady. Especially because we seem to be struggling to accelerate further. In fact, we're losing speed. Which makes me think this plane is too heavy for the amount of engines we have. Okay, so we tweak it. We probably have too much fuel anyway. So what will help and probably help the balance as well, let's drain these tanks. We've got in probably got enough oxidizer in there. That'll reduce the weight a bit. I'm a little worried if we have enough to for the um, oxidizer now. Let's see how center of balance and center of lift looks. Oof, now our center of lift is actually ahead of our Maybe put those back. No, that's the opposite of what we want. We just put that one back that it puts our center of lift a little behind, which is good. While still um, reducing our mass a bit. We could put more engines on, but then we also need to put more. Um, we'll also need to put more 
air intake on because one shotgun can only feed four rapiers, not five. Or not more than that. And shotguns have plenty of drag, so we don't want more than that if we don't have to. Let's see what this does if it's not enough by itself. That might just have shifted our center of mass enough to give us a slightly easier angle of attack maintenance, which might just be enough to uh, make it work. There's always a bit of trial and error to make a SSGO work, especially if you're not great at it. And as I said, I've been studying them for the purpose of tonight, but I, they are not my field of expertise in the game. So let's see how this one does. It weighs a little less and its balance is a little different. So let's see. It certainly seems to be flying a little straighter, at least on the runway, that's good. Despite the pre-lifted nose, it's... Ah, there we go, it did take off by itself. I was just about to... Though it needed to be quite fast to take off. Let's see how well it holds altitude. If I lock it there on the, on the SAS, hands-free, let's see if it holds angle. That looks good. If it can keep doing this, we should be doing well. The whole problem previously could have just been about weight distribution. Mass being slightly too close to the center of lift. certainly seem to be holding angle better now which is what we want and we're accelerating a lot better look at that we're already more than twice as fast as where we topped out before that's what you want to see in an SSDO you want as much speed as possible while you're still in the air where you're only burning liquid fuel and don't need oxidizer now we are cooking with gas Oh, building rockets in this game. Building rockets and building really big contraption rockets that can go interplanetary. Building space stations. Most of the game, except really SSDOs, is stuff that I've gotten really good at over the years. But I've never really went hard on the SSDOs. A lot of people love them so much, they, they do mostly SSDOs. For me, they're a side thing that I'm always like... I'll get good at that next time, you know, and then I never get to it. But in theory, the ability to drove, like deliver probes and stuff to the atmosphere, or to orbit with a plane, which you can bring back intact, especially in a career mode, should allow you to have some pretty cheap ways to complete contracts. A little bit of heat build up, but that's not surprising. We are pushing really hard. We're at 1.6 kilometers per second, in, and we're still in the lower <laughs> atmosphere. Oh, Rage. Thank you for saying I'm a good teacher, but don't call yourself an idiot. You are brilliant. I've seen your test course, remember? Even if that wasn't in <laughs> the game, and it was everything in the you are not. you are not an idiot. And I'm sure you're doing brilliantly in the game. At about 36 kilometer apoaps, we're starting to get to the higher atmosphere. It's going to switch over when we get to about 30 to rocket mode. We don't want to start following um, prograde yet. There's the switch over as predicted. Um, we want to switch to following prograde once we hit about 52 kilometers apoaps, which should be any moment now. We're looking pretty good in fuel there. It looks like this is a working SSTO right here. 51, 52, okay. Switch to prograde following. And now we burn until our apoaps is over 70. And the nice thing about having such a flat flight plan is that you can see our periaps is already just 135 below sea level. Doesn't she just, huh? I mean, that lame she's had since we played WoW together 10 years ago. And 
I thought the same thing then. Might be more than 10 years now. Alright, so, yeah, it's the same as any other launch. We're planning a circularization burn. We go 223 meters per second of delta v required we got 328 left it says so we will have just about enough and a tiny bit left over enough to get back into atmosphere <laughs> oh did you did you upset the ball the, the bot <laughs> i know it wasn't on purpose so no harm no foul Right, we are pushing higher in the atmosphere. We might as well start aiming slowly. Actually, no, stick to prograde holding for now. The reason being, we are still there's still some atmosphere here, and if we start aiming towards that low marker already, we're actually going to push the plane down a little bit. Probably not enough to interfere with the mission, with the plans, but still, we have. Just enough fuel to make to bring this thing to orbit. If we had nuclear engines, we could take it to the next level, and maybe we should do that in the next version. Because nuclear engines are a lot more efficient than rapiers, but I wanted to start with the slightly simpler version. So now we can start following the marker, get to the burn point. There we go, we are in orbit with 108 meters per second to spare. Yes, <laughs> Rach is selling herself short. She's the sassiest Scott I know. To be fair, she's like one of the only five Scots I know, but still. <laughs> Rach is definitely sassy. And with that, we have wonderfully reached orbit successfully with a plane. And we can bring the entire plane back with us. We've got those RTGs, which will regenerate our electricity. It's a bit slow, but it's fair enough. And that means we don't have to deploy solar panels or anything. So let's warp here to the dark side. And we'll prepare for a return vision. Thanks, Rach. I should update that bot message. It's months out of date. <laughs> I'm not streaming anything but Kerbal at the moment. Okay. So, bring our Perry apps down to about 45. Should be fine. Now, normally you aim pro, per, um, retrograde when you're re doing a uh, return from orbit. But we want to aim prograde with an SSDO. And a good reason to put nuclear engines on is because nuclear engines only use liquid fuel. Look how much fuel we have left. But we've got barely any Delta V left because we're almost out of oxidizer. So these rockets can't function. I think if we stick a couple of nuclear engines on this thing it will be a much cooler a much more powerful vessel without significantly altering our other performance so we level it then we hit our action group there we go. And you can see how it's raising our nose. Always do a quick save before you do a return. And now, by just holding prograde, we'll keep ourselves at about a 20 degree upwards angle the whole time. 
which allows our wings to gradually slow us down for a safe return. Uh, we didn't so much drop it, I think, as we all just realized that when you're in your 40s, you don't have time for an MMO anymore. <laughs> I, I was the one who got into it, and then I pulled in everybody from the old WoW guild, and we all had a lot of fun playing together for a while, and then nobody had enough time to keep it up, so eventually we... Um, I, I, I said I'm going to take a few months break, and that was six months ago. I think by now everyone has. So it wasn't so much dropped as just, it's an awesome game, we just, there's just not enough time, you know. In your 20s, when you're single, you can play MMOs as long as you want. Yeah, I want to go back once things are a little quieter as well. But I've been saying that for a while, so maybe in the summer, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. That's not a, that. That's not an invalid criticism. I will grant you that. So if I can land this thing as good as it flew up here, then we have a successful mission. So far, it's doing okay. Um, we probably not going to be anywhere near the space center. I didn't even try to aim for to plan or aim for that. Um, you really kind of want the trajectories mod if you're gonna do try and do that. And there are reasons to want to, and it's a great mod, but it isn't in my baseline mod pack because it's just a little too far. Oh, I got my partner hooked on WoW years and years ago, and she was playing Final Fantasy with me. But yeah, um, that was also um, we're trying to save for a house, and there's a housing shortage in the Netherlands, so. We wanted to save that bit of month for money for the monthly subscription because we weren't playing enough. Um, we will try again once we have our house in a year or so. <laughs> yeah, okay, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, so we're sticking every bit of spare money into our savings to get enough cash to be able to cover the brokerage fees and stuff. And actually, because seriously, the bond on a house will cost less than my rent. Hmm. Yeah, I've never had a PlayStation and I decided after the Rootkeed scandal 20 years ago, I'll never buy another Sony product. I had a PS2 and that was the last one I had. Um... But I'm quite happy with my Xbox Series X. Um, when I'm not doing KSP, I've been playing a lot of Hitman, which just dropped on Game Pass, the whole trilogy. I just finished all of Hitman 1 for the first time, so... Hey, we might actually end up pretty close to the... Um, without having planned it, pretty close to the Space Center here. Because we're now in the low atmosphere and we're not far... We're basically flying over it, I think. Although, I'm not seeing the map marker. No, we're already way past it. We're like in the next continent here. Oh, you guys don't even know. 20 odd years ago, um, Sony released... Um, a whole, Sony Music released a whole bunch of CDs that literally, if you tried to play them on a computer, would install a rootkit on your phone, on your computer, to try and prevent people ripping them to MP3. Which was doubly funny because it was the same time they had just bought the, the Ericsson phone company and were trying to sell it as the Walkman phone with the best MP3 player of any phone on the market. <laughs> Which they actively undermined by making it harder to get MP3s for your MP3 player. They literally, they got sued, dude. They were literally installing a freaking malware on your, on, on, on your, on your system if you played, put this thing in a computer. And this was, obviously, the only people actually affected by this were people who owned the thing. Now, we're no longer quite able to maintain traction, but we have jet engines again, so we can actually speed ourselves up a little bit if we want. So let's press zero so we can switch to a, a forward angle, because we're still like 10 kilometers up. We could just try glide down, but... For that, I think we're going to want to do this. 
We also, if we want to land on land, we're going to need to travel a little further, which we could do by just enabling our engines again. But probably not tracking prograde though. And not with, and don't try to steer a, a space <laughs> or a plane with physical time warp on. I don't know why that action group wasn't working. Yeah, look how much fuel we have in that one here. Do I have these things backwards, maybe? We shouldn't be controlling from there anymore. That was working fine for the re-entry. If I do this... We should be aiming forward. There, now it's working. We could try fly all the way back to the landing, uh, to the space center and land there, but that'll take too long. We're just gonna go land there at the next continent, which we can see right in front of us. And we have plenty enough Delta V to get there, I think. In atmosphere, at least, where we can use jet engines. Or the engines in jet mode, anyway. I will say this on the PlayStations, I am jealous of the Spider-Man games. Those we don't have any other platform. Though we've gotten all, we've been getting a steady um, diet of other um, PS games being released on, on PC now. Um, like God of War is about to be and um, the Horizon series, so... Who knows, maybe they'll bring the Spider-Man stuff to PC sometime in the near future. And if I have my if, if I have my Steam Deck by then I might even be able to play it. I've got money set aside for that. <laughs> but I see my reservation isn't kick in till the second quarter, so probably about in time for my birthday. Not gonna be now in February. Okay, we are getting close to landing time. Let's do a quick save, because we're getting low. Let's hit the brakes so we can enable our air brakes. We may still deploy our parachutes as well. We are definitely way too fast to hit the ground at this angle, at this speed. But let's see, we can probably bleed off that speed just by keeping our nose up a little bit as we approach. And if we... C and then, let's see, nice and gentle, because we're not coming down on a nice smooth... Um, Runway here. We land. We're landing on bumpy grass. So a nice smooth landing is what we want at a nice low speed, which we do seem to be on our way to. Sixty meters per second. We really want to be under fifty, and it looks like we're going to manage that. Parachutes were just ceremonial in the end. We had a perfect landing. Lovely. And of course, with a full science, um, no, a full tech tree, the science is just ceremonial. But oh, for score, I score, I suppose. But still, yeah, you might as well take it. It doesn't do any harm.
Um, when you say recommend for PC gamers that love a good campaign, are you talking God of War? Ooh, I actually kept wine ready for tonight's stream and I forgot to pour it. I wonder if I should take a quick break and get a glass of wine. Because it's only quarter past nine. We still got like 45 minutes and we succeeded. So give me five minutes, folks. I think this is a glass of wine is needed here. There we are. I'm back. <laughs> well, I don't know about important, but it is pleasant. I got this Yonkers Dal Merlot because it's from South Africa like me, but I am not very um, pleased with the results. I won't buy it again. And I cannot, unfortunately, recommend it. It tastes like cheap wine. But... Gotta finish the bottle before I can open another one. Go. Let's see if we can improve the capabilities of our current SSTO just a little bit. I like beer. Um, I uh, there's some really nice Dutch beers. But um, Merlot on my streams are a bit of a tradition. And I quite like my Merlots as well. My favorite type of red wine. Okay. We stick two of these on. These are... I never got to them in Kerbal School, so for the newer people like Reg, these are nuclear engines. They use only liquid fuel, the same as the jet engines do. So they don't need oxidizer. And they are very, very efficient, which makes them great for interplanetary missions. They're a bit low thrust, but that's fine because you're only using them in orbit, really. Except we might use it, need it for the last bit of getting to orbit. Sometimes it's nice to clip them into the body like this. I just got to check our center of lift and center of mass because we've probably moved them now. Yeah, these engines are heavy. They've moved our center of mass backwards. So now our center of lift is way in front, which means we need to do something about that. We can start by doing this. Yeah, just moving the wings back a little already makes a big difference. And if we move the canards back, they'll, bring, they'll help too. In fact, I think I want to move those canards over here. There, yeah, that gives us a bit more of a gap. So the nice thing about that is because they use only um, liquid fuel, we can use that excess liquid fuel in orbit. That works nicely. And the whole setup is just that much easier to work with now. And this can now go a lot further too. Uh, um, we have made it a bit heavier, but I think we'll make up for it because if we run out of oxidizer before we're quite at orbital height, we can use the um, the, the nuclear nukes to get those away. Only for a few months, actually. Me and my family moved here in April. And to answer your question, Dutchman, I haven't tried it yet. I really want to. It's very high on my to-do list, but I've never actually tasted meat. I even, try, even wanted to make some last year, but didn't get around to it. But yes, I really want to know what meat tastes like, because the idea of um, Viking honey wine sounds awesome, but I don't actually know. Now, that said, you need the ability to switch cleanly between engines, if you're going to do this. So, we'll... And toggle engine on and off on button one for our rapiers. And on button two, we'll put the toggle on and off for our nukes. So we can turn all the engines on or selectively choose whether we want um, rapiers or nukes only. Alpha, I'll have to remember that. 
And yes, you do. <laughs> you guys want to take me some, take me places? I am totally open for that, and I'm sure Mad Girl is too. As long as we obviously take proper COVID precautions, we believe in science and proper medical safety in this house. Okay. Let's go see if we uh, uh, how this one performs with the extra engines we added, and since we conveniently had a place to put them. <laughs> now you don't really want to use your nuclear engines while you're in the atmosphere because they're super inefficient there and they'll just waste fuel. If you tiny bit short of, of thrust, you can stick them on. Switch those off then. Max out our throttle. And we'll use the jets only to get started. Yep, I got my booster just a week or two ago. So I'm fully vaxxed with one booster down. Uh, mask in every shop and on the bus. I haven't driven a car since I got here. I haven't needed to. Public transport here is so amazing. And I'm so happy because I used to hate driving. I really don't miss it at all. Alright, so. Aim at 90 degrees. 10 degrees. There we go. Too far. Having a little bit of trouble steering because we don't have as perfect a weight distribution as we had the last time but that should do get our wheels up hell yeah and that's why I two years later I still haven't had COVID did actually get flu this December for the first time in two years but I took two COVID tests I know it was only flu Yeah, I mean, I used to... You don't realize how much you really hate traffic till you don't have to set to deal with it. Even when I do go to the office, which is not often, but when I do, it's like an hour and a half from here to The Hague on the train and the bus. But you know what? An hour and a half on the train, I can read a book. I can sit and listen to music. I don't have to concentrate or have to worry about whether the next guy is going to be an idiot who's going to cut in front of me. None of that stress that comes with driving, especially in traffic. You just sit and relax till you get to your station and you get off. And everything is close. I mean, it's a 500 meter walk from the station to my office. I can actually take the tram and get even closer, but I don't even bother because a 500 meter walk isn't going to kill me. This is doing wonderfully, I'd say. We're getting lovely speed. We are maintaining our angle of attack without any major effort. Um, raising our apps well. We should be switching to rocket mode soon. I think that small addition of the nukes hasn't significantly altered the performance of the ship. And it looks like Okay, we're tilting a little backwards, which means we have a small weight shift happening, but it's within what we can compensate for, so not a problem. I should have rechecked the um, control from here actions, though, because they clearly weren't happy. Okay, we've just switched um, to rocket mode. That's it's on perfectly on schedule. Now we watch our apple apps. We want to get to above 52 before we start following prograde. The rocket mode does have a lot more thrust than the jet mode, but it uses a lot more fuel. Oh yes, Karen is in love with strip waffles. She loves them. I'm not so big on them. I don't like that like things quite that sweet. But yes, strip waffles was one of the first things somebody gave us when we got here. Oh, but we but Willy Bolin. I just wish I could get them year round. They're the most delicious thing I've ever eaten. They actually remind me of a South African delicacy called um, Fed Cook. 
literally means fat cake, the Dutch people should recognize it. Um, but fed cook is usually savory. You can also serve it with honey or syrup, but it's not as it's it's much less sweet than Willy Bowl. Otherwise, it clearly shares a common origin, though. All right, I think we are on our way to a successful orbit. So now we can switch off the rapiers, enable the nukes, which will be much more effective. And go plan a circularization burn. We actually overshot a little. We don't need to go to almost 90 kilometers to get into orbit. With an SSTO, you often want to go to just above 70 because you're trying to spare, to be as sparing as possible with your Delta V. But we are perfectly fine here. We only need 170 meters per second to finish getting into orbit. It is. It is really nice. Um, maybe I should try my granny's recipe and see if I can make you some sometime. Um, this thing seems to think we don't have enough to finish, but I think its calculations are off because... That 3,700 is probably more accurate. I think it's just a little confused because we're in Atmo. And we got engines that are disabled without stages. Hmm. I brought my favorite South African recipe book with me for when I have cravings for South African food. There, there are some that are interesting, like fricadelle, the name exists in Afrikaans, but it's a completely different thing. In Afrikaans, it's, uh, in South Africa, a fricadelle is a meatball, but bigger than a Swedish meatball with onions in. So, not very similar to what is sold under the name here. <laughs> Certainly not something you get as a snack at a takeaway place. Alright, so Kubel Engineer has no idea what our actual Delta V usage is, but that's fine. <laughs> that, Mac, that total there is accurate, and it's showing us that this thing has about over 3,000 meters per second of Delta V. You realize we can actually go to another planet with that. Now, without a way to refuel, we wouldn't be able to get back, but it's certainly enough to like go to Minmus or something, or even the moon. We should be in orbit in just a few seconds. As I mentioned, the nuclear engines are a little um, low for us, but honestly, I think so, but I'm probably biased because, I mean, I grew up with the stuff, so, um, and I quite like the Dutch fricadelle, but it's a very different thing than what, you, than what we call fricadelle in South Africa. <laughs> and South African cooking has the advantage of a very big Malay influence. Yeah, you get a lot of Malay food, but the Afrik uh, in Afrikaans, you got, a, you got basically Dutch cooking mixed with Malay to make a lot of what we would consider traditional dishes um, were created that way. And that, particularly because the Cape Malay people are um, also speak Afrikaans. So they there's, a, there's both a cultural and a culinary overlap there that had a very interesting impact. One of my favorite dishes is babuti, which is a... Uh, it's somewhat reminiscent of American meatloaf, but you use rougher mints. Um, and it uses chutney and sweeter spices. Um, it's covered in a layer of meringue egg. And... Um, then it's served with yellow rice. Oh, delicious. Right, let's do, our, let's do our return test. We certainly made it to orbit with lots of Delta V. We can go very far with this thing. Okay. 
So we're going to burn retrograde to reduce our very apps back into atmosphere. About 45 is fine for this. And if we had had any a payload in this tank, we could have dropped it off here and it would be in orbit. So now we want to control from there. Close that, point prograde. <laughs> I was just having a little bit of homesickness, I suppose, but clearly it's an, it, it, it's an, it, it is something that um, is contagious. I'm sure we can do something about it at some point. Right. Okay, nice and level. Warp the weird Atmo. So while this could go very far, we only have half an hour left in the stream, so and it takes a while to land them, so I'm not gonna try and do that today. Um I think the numbers speak for themselves. But if you follow this as a best guide, maybe watch Veos's um V A O S, I'll put it put it in chat. For more details, um, his channel, or especially, he's got the best SSTO guides I've seen. And it's, I, I pretty much, a lot of the tips you've seen me use here, like the probe core and the um, sticking the nose cones behind the engines, I got that from him. So I highly recommend having a look at him if you want to learn how to build better SSTOs. But this is a nice view of how to get to the basics. and. We ended up with one that you could literally go to the moon and back with, bring the whole thing back and not have left a single stage behind all of um, So you get all your money back for parts. You only spend fuel. Now the real next level of this is if you put a converter and a mining drill on this, you go land on Minmus and you drill down and then you refuel in situ and they we typically call that in game an ssta a single stage to anywhere because when you can refuel wherever you land you have a plane that you have a, a vehicle that without losing any parts can pretty much go anywhere in the solar system because just stop somewhere along the way and refuel do so until you've gone everywhere you want to go and then come back Yes, though I am pretty um, meticulous about any time I can, even if I am doing staged things, I try to stage so that no junk remains in orbit. It's not always possible to do so perfectly, but I do my best. Matt Lown is straight up religious about it. Great channel, love his content, love his KSP stuff. I learned a lot from him too. And he never leaves a stage in orbit. But I'm not that good. I... Le I try to plan to get them back and if you watch my Kerbal School series on YouTube you'll see that I put a real effort into it but um, not more not so much that I make the mission overly complex to achieve it especially in my beginner series I didn't do that because I mean it is after all intended for beginners Who knows, we might actually have SSTOs in the future. Some of the current commercial space programs are sort of pushing it, but they're really billionaire joyrides, and they don't make it to orbit. They're, they're the most plain likes of the one I think Blue Origin is kind of plain like. Yeah, um, great, but it's not an SSTO because it doesn't make it to orbit. It just goes into space and then falls back down. At least in the old days, space tourists, you know, would like go to the ISS and stay there for a week like Mark Shuttleworth did. And, you know, get an actual space travel experience, not just um, a few minutes in zero G. We're right by the space center. We should be able to like flip around and go land there. Okay, let's stop using physical time warp then if we're going to try that. We 
just overshot barely, so we should actually be able to land there. We might need to give a little bit of engine. I don't know if we have enough speed to glide all the way there. Um, we're going to want to switch to um, control from the cockpit again. So we're not tilted up anymore. Yeah, we definitely need engine. So enable our, our jet engines, fire them. Now we should be able to get control over the vessel again. I was hoping we'd be able to get control over the vessel again. One of our engines didn't shut down. Come now, we are so close to the runway. Come on, let's get a runway landing. If I can just get control. like we're getting close we're very low on the low above the water here and we definitely don't have as good um, altitude control as we had in the previous version a little, but we might have a shot we have to get some height though We're like 12 kilometers from the runway here. <laughs> I wasn't thinking that was nice, but thanks. I thought that was very struggly. Uh, with the changes we had to make to compensate for the weight of the nukes, we, on the final phase, definitely have a harder to control plane than we had before. Uh, okay, time to, f to go for the easy mode and fire the parachutes. We're not gonna make it to the runway. Because we just can't quite fly straight, fly straight enough. We might destroy our engines in the process, but our cobbles will be home safe. I suppose I could try quick load the save I had, but... Let's try. Can't hurt. <laughs> Sniper, what boom would you expect with a plane at this range? And, they, and it's manned! I can't boom it without killing my cobbles. And that was actually pretty boomy, so... I don't know why you're complaining. I try not to kill my kerbals. If I can help it. But now we seem to have better handling. We, with the quick save load, we seem, it seems to have undone whatever was causing it to be so um, wobbly. Okay, let's please sniper, but I'm still relanding it properly. Uh, that wasn't what I was trying to do. But there's your boom, sniper. Not quite the one I was going for, but now let's see if I can get a runway landing done. I've never actually landed an SNCO on a runway, so if I do this, it would be a first time for me.
Well, I get 69 bits every time I blow something up in snipers on stream. That's worth it. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can land this thing. Properly this time. Come now, brakes. Activate. Yeah, we're off target. Close, but I think we can do better. We have a few minutes to play around. It's not enough time to do anything else, so we might as well see if we can get a perfect landing, right? That's looking better. Nah, I think that's as good as we're gonna get. I'm just not quite getting the landing in. Yeah, probably. And I should be able to make it from that distance too. Let's try one more time. It's, this is not a super maneuverable plane. It's built for efficiency rather than fine tuned steering. What I was doing here was useful, but I overshot last time, I went too far. That's looking a little better. Now adjust my aim properly. Also too fast though, but the parachutes can help with that. <laughs> okay, imperfect, but at least we're on the runway. And there's an extra boom. One engine's worth of boom. <laughs> Which even got a tiny bit of science here. No, I think parachutes have a certain boobishness to them at the best of times. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, boobs are nice. More things in the world should look like boobs. And less things should look like penises. And not that I have an issue of either, it's just it'd be nice if we had a little more equilibrium, you know? <laughs> well, this is Kerbal. Perfect is, is, not, is not a frequent occasion. Okay, well... I don't really know how to fill in another 15 minutes. Hmm. I don't know where we're going to fit the butts in either. <laughs> but yes, some nice butts out in the world would be good. 
And I have definitely made sure that if I put this on YouTube, it's going to be demonetized now. Oh well, it's not like my YouTube channel has ever made any money. <laughs> That's fine. I don't put it on there for money. I put it on there for the people who missed the live stream. Alright, then I will bid you all adieu. Thank you so much for a lively discussion. It was the, the best I've had. And for joining me tonight. It's always lovely to have a, quite a lot of viewers. It's nice when people enjoy the stream. And I will see you again on Wednesday. And between now and then I'll figure out what we're going to do. <laughs> Alright. Good night. Oh, come on. <laughs>